I would like to show you how to assemble a dyno 3x3x3 cube um, which you can get at my Shapeway shop. I'll first go over different pieces that there are and then I'll tell you something about uh, the magnets that are used in this puzzle and then I'll show you the uh, general assembly. So uh, this is the core of the puzzle. Um, uh, the core has uh, two sets of screw holes, uh, one set for the face turning turns and one set for the corner turning turns. And you can see this hole with three stalks around it is for a corner and the one with four a piece of plastic around it, that's for a face. So this is a uh, face uh, centerpiece and this is a corner centerpiece and you can see the corner centerpiece is triangular face centerpiece is square and there are a few internal parts which you need to make the puzzle work and there's this peach which sort of has the functionality of an edge piece as this piece, uh, I forgot to mention you need 12 of these edge pieces uh, you've got six of the face turning pieces and eight of the corner turning pieces. And then you've got 24 of this piece and I don't really have a good name for this piece. I tend to call it the corner support. But there's three of these surrounding each corner and you need 24 of them in total. And then there's this piece and this piece is also internal so you need to support the rest of the pieces. And this piece is actually very similar uh, to a piece on the rhombic dodecahedron. So you need 24 of these dihedral dodecahedron pieces. And, and finally, we've got well, not finally, we've got this piece here. This is a um, face piece. So this is one of the external pieces, and it's the only external piece uh, that doesn't have magnets. So this is one of those external pieces. And then we've got edge, corner, and tip pieces. So this is uh, an edge piece. This is a corner piece. And for lack of a better name, this is a, a tip piece. Now the puzzle is fully mechanic, but it uses magnets to kind of help stabilize the pieces because these tip pieces, these tend to slide around a lot and the magnets help keep them in alignment so the magnets hold them together like this and it's actually very easy to work out how to install the magnets because on this piece there are two magnets one on this side and one on the other side and the trick is to put these in so they attract each other you can also put them in so they repel each other, but in that case it would be a lot harder to put them in, of course. So these two magnets are attracting each other, and of course the exact polarity doesn't matter. And the trick is to take um, two magnets and put them on this piece. So I will just take two extra magnets. So now I've put an extra magnet on here, you can see it sticking out a bit. And I'll also put a magnet on here, an extra magnet. So the trick is to take one of these edge pieces without the magnet glued in yet, put in some super glue, and then just snap them together like this, and then slide this piece out of the way while pressing down it. The magnet will be placed very nicely into the edge. And you can do the same for the corner piece. You've got this extra magnet on here, and well, you would put some glue in this hole. You'd snap them together like this, you'd push them together and then while pushing you'd slide them apart and that way the piece would be uh, nicely glued in and of course it's nice to have a piece of paper on your desk so you can kind of rub it down like this to make sure it stays put while it's drying. It's also nice to have a little bit of a um, piece of plastic card so you can push down on these pieces because the glue bond between magnets and plastic is not very strong. Um, it's actually rather easy for these uh, magnets to become loose. So you actually need to wait a fair while for super glue to dry. It's not like it doesn't dry instantly. It takes a fair bit of time for it to dry. 
And the thinner the layer is, the quicker it dries. But you need to give it some time for it to dry. You shouldn't start assembling these pieces immediately once you've glued them. And also you should be careful not to pull apart pieces like this because even the force of the magnets can be enough to separate them. So it's best to always slide them. But in general you should be good, but maybe you'll have to re-glue a few magnets a few times. But it is kind of tricky getting the bond to work. But once there's maybe four magnets in the whole puzzle that will be problematic, but once you've re-glued them once they'll uh, stay put uh, pretty much indefinitely. So let's get going. You will need uh, M3 screws of about 10mm long. These ones are actually 12mm, uh, but that doesn't really matter. Yeah, well, I'd say about 5 to 10 to 15 millimeters will be fine. So just take a face piece and locate the proper hole on the core. You want a hole that has four uh, stalks surrounding it and not one that has three surrounding it. So the square piece goes on a hole that has all sort of square symmetry. So just simply case of screwing that in. Let's switch to this screwdriver. The loose screwdriver has a bit of a bunch of other bits hidden inside of it and it rattles around a bit. So this one is a little bit quieter for the video. So you just want to keep turning this until you start feeling more resistance and then just take well an eighth of a turn back and you see this is nice and tight. I like it a little bit tighter. There we go. So now just take uh, the other type of sender, a corner type sender, and this is a non-triangular sender, and that goes into a hole, this hole right here, with triangular symmetry. And for this one too, just keep turning until you feel the resistance increase, and then just take a tiny step back. Yes, that will feel good. And you can actually see that my screws are a little bit too long for the core. They're sticking out, so they could have been a little bit shorter, but it doesn't hurt having them longer. So size doesn't really matter here. So we'll just put in one of the uh, thrombic dodecahedron pieces that just slides in, just twist it, and it uh, goes in. And let's just put them in one other of the uh, triangular center pieces. And actually it takes a fair bit of time before you can start putting on a lot of pieces. Initially the assembly is mostly just screwing on centers. So we've got another one of the triangular centers on it, now we'll put in one of the uh, dino rhombic dodecahedron pieces like so. So now we'll put a face center here and then we'll can build an edge over on this spot. So now we can put in one more of the um, dino rhombic dodecahedron pieces. And now as I turn this into place, we'll notice that over here in this slot there should go an edge. So what we'll do is to take a little turn back. And now we can put in this edge like so. But actually that's not enough. Because in this slot there will be a, a corner support piece and there will be one over here as well. So we'll just take a turn back again. And then these pieces can go, the corner support can go in like this. And now before I put on this other corner uh, support, we'll actually notice that in between here goes an exterior edge. So I'll take that edge and put it in like so. And then the corner support fits like so. But we're still forgetting pieces. Because right here we should put uh, the outer face piece. So. And just take these out again. 
And this is one of the outer face pieces. And as you can see, it's got a little foot on the bottom. And that foot fits in here. And then this edge fits on like so. And another corner support. Now we can put another face piece in there. And we'll finish off with one of the um, dining room dot creating pieces in. And that will require a little bit of turning again. So there we go, that's our first edge piece in place. So now let's put the face piece over here. And then we can uh, put in the first corner piece once we get that piece in. Of course, the disadvantage of using long screws is that you have to screw them in for a fair bit of time. And in this puzzle, you don't need any springs or uh, washers. I normally like the feel that uh, springs give, but in this puzzle, it doesn't really make much of a difference because there are just so many parts that interact and you, you don't feel the springs even if they're in. I tried. And if you're not using springs, there's not much point using washers. The washers are really there to protect the plastic from the spring rubbing up against them. Like when you've just got a smooth screw head, it's not really going to do anything too uh, terrible. So there we go. And now we actually are going to put in first one of these uh, edge pieces. Like so. Internal edge pieces anyway. And then we'll put in one of the uh, corner supports. Which will fit like so. Now we can fit in one uh, of these pieces. And now we're quite getting ready to put in a corner, but first we'll take one of these uh, tip pieces. And thanks to the magnets, it's all really easy. You can just uh, snap it on like so and it won't fall out. And then we'll take a corner. A corner will go in like so. Like so. And then we can put in one more um, edge uh, support piece, this guy. And one of these internal uh, edge pieces. There we go. So this just slides together. And now we've got well, the first corner in place. And now we can um, put a uh, triangular center over here and then we can build up a bit more of this corner. Yes, there we go. So this one will take a, a dino rum to a cuterum piece. We can slide in one of the face pieces. Sometimes it's a little tricky getting it to turn any uh, further when, while you're putting in pieces. Puzzle overall will be a lot more stable once it's finished. We'll put in an edge piece and then we'll uh, snap on this uh, tip piece here. We can now put an edge uh, a corner support over here. And let's see, then we can take a face piece which uh, fits like so. And, and finally, the uh, Roman Dedicatron piece goes in like so. And we'll do the same on this part to get one corner fully uh, finished. And so I kind of forget to mention in the beginning that with these magnets, it's very easy to get a polarities right. Once you've got uh, magnets in the tip piece, you can basically use that one tip piece 
as templates for building up all the other pieces by the technique I showed you. Uh, attach a magnet on there, uh, put some super glue in the receiving hole, snap them together and slide them apart. And then when you've got a, a corner assembled you can use the uh, corner as a template for the other pieces. And you can do similarities over the edge. If you one edge assembled, one corner assembled, you can use it to assemble more tip pieces. And it's actually a very, it's a handy technique and it works really well in this puzzle. You don't, you, you basically can't go wrong. So, right here we're once again assembling uh, an edge piece into place. And along with the edge piece we'll uh, put in a uh, tip. This weird internal supporting piece, and don't forget, <laughs> at this point you need to put in a face piece. The face pieces are quite easy to forget, and then you have to take a little step back. So there you go, that's one corner assembled, and at this point we can check if it works, but of course at this point it's not broken in, and without all the pieces in place it's going to be a little bit hard to turn. But you can see it's going reasonably nicely already. So that's part of his puzzle assembled. Now we'll move on to uh, this space here. You can make up the order as you go along. It doesn't really matter in what exact order you put in the pieces. Now one thing I've actually, these pieces are very easy to forget, these edge pieces. Um, I constantly do it and you don't really notice that you've forgotten them. Basically, if you're assembled you're likely to actually forget to boot in one of them and you won't notice it in the way it turns. And you'll think you have a spare, but it's just easy to forget to put in those pieces and I'm not sure if that really matters, but try and think of it because you want to have a complete puzzle. So we'll put in one of the edge pieces. And the uh, corner support, the rhombic dodecahedron piece, and then we can put in one corner. And of course, the corner needs a uh, corner support on the other side as well. We can get a little twist. And over here, we'll put in one other edge piece, but before we do that, we will slip in this uh, piece into place. And then we'll just turn the whole assembly into place like so. And let's take one of the uh, triangular center pieces and we'll put it into this hole right here. So I've just put in one of the rhombic dodecahedron pieces and at this point I'm going to add just a little bit of lubricant because it's hard once the puzzle is assembled to get it in. It would, would of course be a good idea to break in the puzzle before you lubricate it. And generally with my puzzles I break them in and then I dye them. And that gives you the best turning possible I've noticed because the breaking in removes a lot of loose powder and then the uh, dyeing washes the powder away and after that you've got a, a very well turned puzzle. But of course you don't want to dye it, you don't want to lubricate the puzzle before you dye it because if you put lubricant in along with your dye it's not going to take. So that's uh, one corner cell and we'll go onto that one. Just the same thing, center corner. So for this puzzle, 
settling it is not too difficult. It's actually quite about. It's a similar mechanism to Super X, but because everything is larger, you've got more room to work with, so it's a little bit easier to put together. But gluing the magnets is a little bit tedious, that takes about uh, two hours if you're uh, unlucky. Now some people might tell you that lubricants on shape of puzzles don't make much of a difference, but they really, really do. By the way, that's what I'm using is just a silicon spray, but in order to avoid spraying all over the place, I've first sprayed it into a container, and then I've used a little uh, pipette to uh, suck it in, so I can apply it a little bit more uh, carefully. So the first puzzle trick is really just get all the pieces in place and then just twist it together. So there we go. At this point it's good to put in one of the two remaining uh, face pieces. With this puzzle I always finish with a um, face uh, center last. That gives you the best um, access and to assemble it. It's very difficult to finish with a corner piece because you cannot adjust the tension on the corner screws once the puzzle is assembled. So the face pieces you can adjust all you like but you need to get the corner pieces uh, good straight away. But it's not very difficult to get them good, it's just you want this uh, to turn with not too much resistance but you don't want it to be too loose either. A little bit more loop. Along with this part, of course, the edge piece. Oops, wrong order. So I've put in one of the dino robot dodecahedron pieces, and then I'll go in with a uh, support piece, the internal edge piece. We'll give that a twist. Now we can take uh, an edge piece like this one here. But before we do that, let's just put a uh, face piece in there. And we can take another uh, sport piece. And uh, it's done in Roman Dodecadian piece. Oops. I don't want that one in yet. We first want it. <laughs> the face piece over here, of course, and then we can put in the rubber going green piece, and then we can twist it to the uh, halfway point. It's not sitting entirely right right now. Okay, there we go. Now we will build it, build up this uh, corner here. So that's a matter of taking two uh, tip pieces like so. Put in a little bit more. Well, and then we can take a corner piece and be careful snapping this into place because those magnets are quite strong. We can put in the support piece. And now we can simply push in the edge piece like so, but if that proves difficult, you can just carefully get this little twist that way. And then it will just slide right in like so. And now of course it's simply a matter of putting doing the same thing on this side. So the tip pieces, corner piece, And we'll 
twisted a little bit that way. So there we go, now we'll assemble these two corners and then we can start putting in the final pieces around that face. Actually, I'm noticing there's some stick powder in here, so I'll just uh, use. You can just use a toothpick to get rid of this powder. Very understandably, shapers don't always take the time to clean each and every of the parts perfectly. But of course, they're doing a good job at. They're doing a very good job at a very reasonable prices. So, Chippers have just made 3D printing very, very cheap. Well, not cheap, but very much less expensive than it was before. So I'll put in a uh, Roman Catholic here in piece, a face piece, uh, an edge piece, put it on like so. Now of course this corner will snap on magnetically. We can take another support piece and put it over there. Now we can take a face piece, put it over there, and then finally a Dino Roman Catholic here in piece, like so. Then just carefully twist that into place. More stuck powder. Okay. So now we'll take the final uh, corner piece. All corner center. And that will go in there. Okay, so these pieces we can put in the face piece over there, one edge piece, and of course along the edge piece tip, a corner support over here, face piece. And finally, a rhombic coated key from keys. So there you go. That's our puzzle nearly finished. Just one more face. And we'll do this face just by taking this face piece and we're going to put in a screw, but only put it in like two or three turns or maybe four or five. So this face piece can still move around freely. And this will give us a place to um, snap in the remaining parts. Because the most tricky parts going to come now, we need to get these four remaining dino robot dodo heating pieces and get them into place of the mechanism. So I find it's easiest to put all of them in like so at once and then just push down while giving it a little bit of a twist. And then it will snap into place. So there we go. 
that might be one of the trickiest stages of uh, assembly. And now you can just give the screw a few more twists. You don't want it to be tight yet. So these pieces will stay in uh, permanently. But they won't come flying out when you try to insert some other pieces. So now we kind of need to uh, snap in all of these other parts. I find it's easiest to start with uh, an edge piece and put it in like so. And then just push it in. Now if you need to, you can use a, a screwdriver to apply some extra force. Nylon parts are very strong so you won't damage them. And besides, you might make a little scratch in there, but that's not really a problem for the puzzle. It will turn fine either way. And then when you've got this edge sport in over here, we can start putting in the corner uh, support pieces. And just similarly, you just put them, put them up against this final centerpiece and then just push up and down and you, you push them that way and that way. So kind of in that direction you push them. And that helps snap them in place. And then we can put in this other piece as well. Oh, that one went easily. So now we can assemble uh, this uh, edge here. So we want to put in that face piece first because this face piece is really... If we wanted to put in one of those at the very last time, that would not be possible. And then we can take this um, edge piece and put it in. So now you kind of just need to push out these two support pieces a little bit. And then it will just um, snap right in. There we go. And there's actually no need to put in these pieces just yet. Because we can just rotate this face and put them in. And because we will be rotating this face a lot to get the pieces in, it's not handy to have these filled in yet because they'll just keep falling out and that's not uh, very convenient. Uh, so now let's put in uh, this edge piece here. And for that we'll rotate it to 45 degrees, that will make it easiest to put it in. And then just push it in, it will make a little click noise, but that's fine. And then this is a little bit tricky because we need to put in the corner and this piece and I think it is easiest to put the corner in first and of course we want to put in that tip piece as well. And then just snap this guy in. This is a little bit tricky. You have to kind of push in, in the three directions but it, it was still fairly easy. It didn't require much force but it's okay to use the force. Anyway. Uh, I'll snap in another chip piece to complete as much of the puzzle as possible. And now we'll put in a support piece over there so we can build up another of the edges. So I'll just uh, snap that in. One more face piece like so. And then we can put in an edge over there. And then of course it will be slightly tricky putting in this tip piece that will go over here. But I find it's easiest to put in this edge piece uh, first. So now this piece, and let's see, I think it's best at this point to slide it in like so. Come on, yeah, there we go. So that's, yep, more of this corner assembled, and I will move on to that corner. And we'll put in the uh, edge piece first, so we'll rotate this thingy to uh, 45 degrees again. And then we will attempt to push in this piece. And this will get basically progressively harder because as you get in more pieces the puzzle will be more will become more stable. But you can always use a, a screwdriver to give you a little bit of leverage. So now we want to put in this uh, corner support over here. 
and that's just snaps in like so and again you, you kind of want to push upward on this center because the center still has to screw loose so it will have a little bit of given it to uh, come up and allow the piece to snap in so let's say corner piece So we're going to put in uh, another uh, corner support piece over there. Now this is a little bit suboptimal. You want to do this at a 45 degree twist. And as you can see, I'm trying to turn to 45 degrees with this piece. doesn't really want to rotate with it. So I'm just give it a little uh, convincing. Push that a little bit. And now we can push in this uh, corner piece. Come on. So at this point I'll just use the screwdriver to give it the final push. There we go, snapped in. And now we'll just repeat the familiar routine of uh, filling up this uh, slot for the edge pieces. So what the edge piece I'm doing is I'm sl slipping it under one of the corner supports and I'm pushing it that way and then it gives you enough room to push it down to also uh, slip it under the other uh, support piece. And we'll put in this uh, tip piece now. You can also snap them in like so, oh, that's actually quite a bit easier. Okay, so now before we start building up this final edge, we want to put into um, position uh, those um, remaining pieces. So we'll do that now. So now I've put three of them in, but uh, the one over here, because here we'll build up the final edge and then we can snap that one in uh, last. But first we need to get uh, the corner support, uh, the, well the internal edge piece in place. Well that snapped in quite easily. And now it's going to get somewhat, well it's going to get one trick here. Because what, what we need to do now is um, we're going to put in this corner. And we need to get in the corner support. What I'd like to do is just use a screwdriver and kind of make the gap between the edge piece and the corner a little bit greater. And then we can put in the edge support. And I put it in like so, under an angle, and, and first slip it under the loose face and then just push it down. And if you like, you can use a screwdriver to give this a little bit more of a push. And there we go, it snapped in. So now we need to repeat the same thing uh, for this other corner. Now we've got the corner in place and so 
now we need to attempt to push in this last edge support piece and this is very much the most tricky step of the entire assembly. Yes, there we go. So that was a little bit tricky, but you just need to use a bit of force, and I kind of I was pressing down a little piece of this hand, and then with the screwdriver, I pushed uh, this internal edge out of the way. Let's see, it's not quite in the rocket as it is. Okay, so that's very good. Now we need to just put in these uh, last two uh, face pieces. So that one snaps in nicely. And then this other one. And now we'll lose our snap in the edge first and then we'll uh, uh, slip in these two uh, pieces uh, last. Of course, the magnets like to uh, interact each other. That's what our magnets for. So you want to keep track of that. This is the face with loose screws. So you know which face to uh, tighten up at the end. So the trick here is you've got this bit which sticks out at the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it under one of the corner support pieces, which hooks in like this, and then I'm going to push it that way and down, so that the other support piece will have opportunity to uh, clip in. And for this it can't hurt to use a screwdriver and just separate these pieces out a little bit. But actually what I'm doing now is I have a kind of stuck the edge piece between the two face pieces. Now with the screwdriver I have pushed one of the edge ports out of the way so the corner could go under there. And now I'll repeat the same loops. This is quite tricky. And we've got it in place, that's very nice. So there you go, that's nearly assembled. We can do a turn if you like. And we can put in those final pieces, and this is the face with the screw, I hope. Oops, I need to do that a little bit more carefully. There we go, that's one. And now we just need to put in this other piece as well. What you can also do is you can give this face a twist. So I've kind of twisted this face a little bit and that will make it somewhat easier uh, to push in this piece. But then a little bit of force will also make it easy. And now it's simply a matter just give this a little bit of breaking as you can see this little turns quite smooth already without too much work because it's actually quite a uh, loose puzzle but the magnets help keep it in uh, check very nicely so let's try this top turn right here 
and as this puzzle breaks in, right now you don't really notice the magnets because of the force the turning is taking, but as the puzzle breaks in, turning will take more force and then the magnets will become more, more noticeable. But as you can see, that is how to assemble a dyno 3x3.